This is the table of work I've got to do on my car. So I will get to that. Um, basically, to do these, you need to take the two bolts out of there, the top of the strut, and then there's one main bolt underneath that holds the shock to the wheel knuckle. So once that's out, more than likely I'm going to have to use uh, my air compressor and an air hammer because the seal that goes onto the spine, the spline, usually gets uh, seized on there. So it's either going to be cut it open, bend it open, pull it off, or air hammer it out. So lots of fun. It takes at least a half an hour just to get the bottom of that shock off. The part right here, this seizes onto the spline that it seats to so it's gonna be a lot of work so uh god it's raining out like bad here in niagara falls and generate some warmth so i don't freeze my butt off and get sick in here <coughs> but as you can see my clips Real carbon fiber hood and all that. So, um, I'm going to start making this video. i got to get prepped. But I'm not going to do what all the other mechanics do to show you how to fix something. I'm not going to waste half an hour, hour, two hours of your time watching every little nut and turn and twist that I have to do to get this done. Bit by bit, I'm going to get there and I'm going to show you what to do. Most people don't own something like this, but I went out and bought one. Just... Specifically to be able to, because I work out of my garage to do labor-only mechanics for people around the Niagara region. So, I bought myself a strut compressor. Heavy duty. So that I could do trucks, to cars, to anything. So then that way, I am, it's available. People are, can get the work done for half the cost at a shop through me. So th that's my big, you know, sales pitch is, I am a licensed mechanic. I just... So here's the update. We have to use the air hammer. Got the bolts undone up top. As you can see, both are undone. Sitting in the back. <coughs> now I have gotten the nut off of this one. It's actually easier than I thought to get this shock out of here, which is totally destroyed. Now, the issue is, is it's seized on right there. So I'm gonna have to use the air hammer, hit it here and here to get it to push off. It's seized on to the spine, so that's my next step. And when I get that out, I'm gonna show you the reconstruction of the strut on my uh, strut compressor. Okay, so I used my angle cutter because it was seized on there. This is the piece that will seize on there because of the spline. It gets rusty, you gotta clean it up, put some anti-seize in there and that will prevent it from doing that. It was easier to get off than I thought because I've been prepping this every time I do them. But I had to cut a section out in order, as you can see, in order to get this to come off. So as you can see, this is my, my rear shock. It's all rusty. Uh, but uh, this is just one phase. I will show you the next phase in the vise once I get it there. As you can see, I've got it set up in the vise. Already compressed. I'm about to pull off the nut and switch out the shock for a new one, which is this one right here. So, proper tools make the difference. As you can see, I got the bolts back on, the shock in place, struts put the back together, brand new. Now I'm just mounting everything in place. When you install these, you have a lip here. A lot of people make the mistake of putting that lip on the back side. You need the flat side so that your mounting bolt, this, can sit flush up against it and lock it in place with the lock washer. Okay, if you put that lip facing out, it doesn't give the right tension and it doesn't hold it in place. So you got to make sure you put that shock or that strut back in the right direction. 
which is the lip right here. So it seals up against this. It's concave, so it will slide and snug up onto it and keep it in place so it doesn't move. Just a pointer.